Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we have the remarkable Dr. Mike Kaufman. His amazing book is Essential Reading, if you're listening to this program, americaplundered.com is a website. That's americaplundered, P-L-U-N-D-E-R-E-D.com. Uh, what's the other website for your other main information on your uh, your research and your activism, Dr. Mike? Uh, that is on um, epi-us.com, EPI for Environmental Perspectives Incorporated, epi-us.com. Yeah, and of course that covers a lot of things about the, the uh, I call the scamtastic scam about carbon as a death gas from hell. Uh, they don't discuss the carbon oxygen cycle. They don't discuss the fact that uh, that the amount of pollution primarily is coming out of volcanoes that's changing the atmosphere that we're really getting into a global cooling uh, pattern. And the space weather increased energetic from the sun, including ultraviolet lights, changing things like Greenland and under-oceanic volcanism. But nobody talks about these things. They don't talk about the fact that we've reduced sulfur and hydrogen sulfide emissions in the West, not so in China. But uh, we have a, a, I call the usurper in chief, the president, that if he gets a second term, wants to implement a green economy. Let's go back and uh, update people so they understand just how bad this will be to America and how much it will not only destroy jobs but the environment how much it will not preserve uh, ecosystems or, or people's ability to feed themselves and the economy, this is really, really bad. It really is. And one of the worst things that is happening right now is that the EPA is coming out with a set of new regulations called Boiler Mat, M-A-C-T. And basically it is a horrendous set of, 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 of uh, regulations. It's so bad that... They are. They, if they really applied it the way the Clean Air Act was reauthorized in 1991, it would include the Dunkin' Donuts. That they would put the Dunkin' Donuts and, and companies like them out of business if they actually followed the law as written back in 1992. You're talking about the, uh, the, the new update to the RICRA, which is the uh, Clean Air and Water Act, right? Yes. Well, Clean Air Act specifically, because there's really two components. And the key here is the fact that uh, that particular act did not include, nor was there any way you can stretch it to include something like carbon dioxide and methane and other carbon-based uh, gases. It's, it's ludicrous, and yet it could literally cut out as much as 250 gigawatts of power production in this country. I'm not saying it's going to, but nonetheless, those that is really seriously affected, and some of those are going to be able to handle retrofits at you know a fairly significant cost. Some of them are going to go out of business. There is no question that at least 50 gigawatts of our power production here in this country is going to be lost. It's really, really astonishing how bad this really is. Yeah, now, uh, we, we, um, let's go over all the things that you've done in the past. You actually notified congressmen and senators in the late 90s that stopped a lot of the environmental, the Agenda 21 population control, environmental crazies from literally taking the, the handles of power. Those handles of power are now in control of Obama and the international banksters. The globalists are into this. They're into pseudo-environmentalism. They're not concerned about the real ecosystems. They want to have an environmental agenda where they have carbon taxes. Yes. In a carbon-based economy, if Obama gets back in as a reality, you will not recognize this country. This country will be a Muslim, green, I call eco-communism, Muslim country by 2016. Uh, there is no question in my mind that that's what he would try. Now, whether he could get any of it past Congress, depending upon the November elections, is another story. But he has already demonstrated he doesn't care what Congress thinks. He'll do it anyway through executive order, which is totally unconstitutional, but nobody's challenged him yet. Well, it looks like uh, Bonner, for some reason or other, is more interested in maintaining position and power than actually doing his job, which is to actually remove Obama because he should have been impeached already. And it's amazing the DNC doesn't realize that once people catch on and the results of this affect, the Democratic Party will be destroyed forever. Maybe. And this is what has me concerned, Dr. Bill, is the fact that what we're seeing happening, we have a perfect storm being developed. We have 
the Mideast and all the crises that are going on there, the fact that we've left ourselves totally vulnerable to energy from the Mideast when we didn't really have to, and the, 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 what's going on in Europe and the potential and almost, almost certainty that Europe is going to collapse, that uh, is going to affect us in a very negative way. What's happening in China is really serious because their economy, they've been trying to keep their economy primed artificially now for five years, and there's been a big debate whether it's going to be a soft landing or a hard landing, and it looks now like it's going to be a hard landing. When that happens, who knows what's going to happen to the the percentage of ownership of our national debt China is going to do. And then you have a couple of other things that are coming like this um, boiler mat that I just talked about from the EPA that's really going to affect and impact our energy production. Now, before very long, we'll probably have most of the coal-fired generators converted to uh, to natural gas, but it's going to take 10 or 15 years. It did, can't be done overnight. In the meantime, most of these coal-fired generators are going to have to be shut down overnight. Uh, there is about as much as 753 coal-fired generating plants uh, could be lost over the next couple of years with no way to make that energy loss up, which means brownout, blackouts, and horrendous con- uh, problems for the average American. Well, one of the things that they're planning on doing is that the uh, the people behind Obama is the royals of Europe and the banksters, and they control yes. Rio Tinto mines, and they control the major source of uranium, and the manufacturing companies like General Electric, etc., that make nuclear reactors. None of the nuclear reactors that are operational in the world are safe in the sense they all release radioisotopes, they all have on-site storage. There is a potential that they could make safe nuclear reactors, but it's not. I don't see any technology right now. Uh, pebble bed reactors are the closest I see. Thorium, we talked to, I talked to Dar- Ernie Gunderson's uh, experts and others, are, are not safe. None of the reactors, the closest one in North America is a can-do reactor in Canada. Uh, but none of these reactors are safe. They all release radioisotopes are stored on site. The problem is we need to deal with the fact of the carbon cycle. They won't release technology like no- tokamak fusion reactors, which we do have the technology, but it's classified. Yeah, and uh, and to be honest, if we thought if we had the foresight, just our gas resources in North America, we could have converted our generators years ago, and we could completely be away from funding the totalitarian regimes of Saudi Arabia and these other countries. Uh, carbon dioxide, by the way, isn't a death gas. It actually goes into the carbon cycle, makes plants make more oxygen. This is and our food. And our food. The thing is that they actually tried to sequester it. And I had an old whole evening with Dr. Isley back in 1997 where he explained that they want to sequester the carbon using iron sulfates in the upper benthic layer of the oceans <laughs> uh, somewhere along the, uh, in the equatorial water so they can literally precipitate to the lower and literally pull carbon right out of the atmosphere. This is craziness. This is the kind of crazy uh, half-baked ideas. And these people basically think they're such geniuses and they're... Uh, you know, there's three characteristics to the, the I call the progressives. Number one, they're they are uh, narcissistic. Yes, Number very two, much so. they're so they, they're sociopaths. They don't know how to connect with other human beings that the other human being might actually have a clue that they don't have. And number three, they're control freaks. And number four, they're all liars. So those four characteristics are present in all of these people that are called progressive enviromaniacs. I'm a real environmentalist. I was one of the initial early members of Greenpeace years ago until they did evil things like spraying seal pups with red dye so that the, the birds of the sea would peck their eyes out or the killer whales would see these little you know, now sprayed seal pups and they would the, the killer whale would pop through the ice and grab them and throw them in the air like a rag doll and eat them. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this is stupidity on, on steroids. And so I don't agree with any of these pseudo-environmentalist organizations have been totally taken over by the globalists. And, uh, uh, What's the solution? I mean, is Romney and Ryan going to listen to us? Because uh, obviously Obama is out to lunch. I mean, anybody that votes for him, just they're going to destroy the country, and this will be a Muslim, eco-communist country in 2016 if Obama gets back in. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you about Obama. I've got very big concerns about Romney and Ryan because both Romney, well, Romney's demonstrated he's a flip-flopper. He's demonstrated yeah. his liberal tint already. He says he's a conservative. I hope he is, but the fact is, we don't know. Ryan is a conservative, but even his plans go fall far short of what's necessary. We can talk about that on the other side of the break. Exactly. 
Amazing, yeah. We need to we need to have choke chains on these characters to get things done correctly. Back in a moment, with Dr. Mike Kaufman. <clears throat> Welcome back, and uh, you know, I'm I'm working on a series of uh, white papers. I'm sure you're writing all your books. What I'd like to see in environmental policy is a policy of, number one, energy disentanglement with Islam. No more oil bought from Muslim countries. Number two, be energy independent. Have natural gas generators and break up the grid so that if it's you're having natural gas generators running 50% of power, and you'll need those, even if you have solar stations like the sodium-cooled towers, the researching in Arizona and elsewhere, we have solar-cooled towers where basically you have these uh, light fields that literally aim toward a tower up 90 or 150 feet, and that, that tower actually is heating sodium so you can run your, your steam turbines even after the sun goes down. So there's lots of technology, but you always have to have backup hydrocarbon generation and natural gas is the ideal, and they need to break up the grid. The grid needs to be hardened against coronal mass ejections. We need to actually start growing a lot more of our food inside or inside containment against ultraviolet light and high energy because the solar and the space weather is going to make it difficult to grow food. We need to start re-engineering uh, the waterways of the planet, including Nawapa, so that the forest will survive the changes and ravages of changes in water supply, etc. None of these things are being done. And, of course, you know the pseudo-environmentalists want to squish us into super-compact areas where right. it's off-limits for humans to go. And you're one of the top experts that presented this information back in the 90s and in the early 2000s. Tell us all about Agenda 21 and how these NGOs and ICLI, etc., want to force this down our throats and literally put us in super-compact, squishy little cells and literally take away private property, private vehicles, and allow basically no-go zones for human <laughs> beings. It's crazy. Yeah, you just described my book, Plundered. But basically what you have is a, a global agenda to create a world government can to compartmentalize the world into these small areas separated by vast areas of wilderness. As much as 50% of the United States would be wilderness if the Convention on Biological Diversity had been ratified back in 1994. We stopped it an hour before the ratification or the closure vote, which would have led to the ratification vote. And basically what they have is ba they're living in a state of delusion there's no other way you can describe it they basically want to recreate the laws of physics so that they can have a utopian type of world in their vision now not ours uh, in which everybody has equal access to everything and everybody gets paid the same salaries and all the rest this is this social justice garbage yeah, that, yeah by the way this is what's called fairness now yeah um, I, I believe in a thing called in employment where you can you can raise the wages but this idea of fairness where they're basically my sweat is not somebody else's right now, right we want to make sure that we for example with health care uh, I have no problem at all with having a health tax for catastrophic uh, health issues I don't think that it, we should be funding major drug companies to force drugs down people's throat because it's stupid and, and vaccine companies I think everybody should have catastrophic insurance that can cover intensive care and surgery and all that kind of stuff but this idea uh, that that everybody's going to pay into this giant pot that's going to make drug companies, health insurance corporations, and big hospital commissions, which don't necessarily have the least dollar value, and this thing this ties into the environment too. They're going to say, well, we've got to kill grandma to save the environment. We've got to limit population growth because Obama's already signed, uh, signed and actually made statements about one-child policies. He wants to have a one-child policy here in North America. He wants to have the same policies as China, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And so do most of the progressives. It's really, it's a sad state of affairs because they live in such a state of delusion, and yet they control our political system, our judicial system, our education system, and the media. Uh, basically, they control what you and I have an understanding of, except for these pro kinds of programs that you're hearing right now. You know, and I don't know how much longer those are going to last. If we have another four years of Obama, by the end of that four years, you're not going to be on the air, Bill. There's no question about that. Well, I'll tell you what, how we, we've actually planned to be on the air. And uh, this is uh, for those out there listening. Number one, we'll, build, we'll make CDs of our program. Number two, 
we're going to be able to do a shuttle, just almost like little memory sticks, and pass it on that way, almost like a, uh, you know, like a running with a horse, you know, like the old Pony Express. Yeah. <coughs> we'll have radio repeaters. We'll encrypt the signal on mm-hmm. what's called a cloud, which means we can enter into the supranet. And we actually have have computer experts now that are already designing what's called supranet encryption. So we can encrypt our entire radio show on the backbone of systems used by government, and they can't stop us. They can't. They would like to stop us, but they can't. And we have people inside government that are preparing to do this. So uh, there's many different ways. And the more we're almost like taking plastic caps and squeezing really hard to stop them from exploding and knowing they're going to blow. What happens when you squeeze something that's going to explode? It blows your hands off. So yeah. if they try to compress us and try to push us, the people that are on the edge and say, well, it's better to stay in an ignorant state and do no actions because then you're safe. No, you're not safe. You're guaranteeing you're not part of the movement that's going to fix this. They're frightened that if we wake up enough people that actually will take action, it's over. That's why the simple things you've done to actually inform congressmen and senators, literally were like uh, you know Jonah talking to to the Ninevites and giving them a you know a period of forty years of grace before they went back to their old ways and got destroyed. Mm-hmm. That's right. yeah, exactly right. It really is interesting when you look at it from a biblical perspective. It really is fascinating to see what's happened. You know, the whole vote, for instance, we're getting off the subject here, but the whole vote in uh, in the Democratic Convention on God, putting God in their plank, three votes. They denied God three times. Uh, they said they said the last one didn't, but it did. And this is the same thing what happened to Peter. Notice the right. comparison. Yeah. It's really, really fascinating to see. You know, you don't know if it's if if God is doing something like that, one way or the other. But it's fascinating to look at it from that biblical perspective. They, these progressives, liberal progressives, they're uh, Republican progressives too, but these liberal progressives have denied God. It's just literally amazing. Yeah, exactly. That that's why. I tell people it's their personal choice when they get in that voting booth, but you don't want to vote and split the vote either so Obama gets back in. You want to make sure that you do everything, including voting, pro-real environmentalism, pro-life, congressmen, senators, and others, and we want to make sure that we make sure the White House knows including the Mormon church is going to be monitoring every movement by uh, Romney if he gets in as president, and Ryan. The Catholic uh, Council of Bishops will be watching Ryan because he says he's a big Catholic sure. and pro-life. We right. need to have the personhood issue death with. By the way, personhood and uh, eugenicide with Obamacare and the environment are all tied together. People say they're separate issues. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're not separate uh, it, issues. They're not really separate issues. They're just different phases of the same issue. Right. And we, in order to really understand what's going on, you have to understand it that way, because they have these cross fertilizations across whole, what would otherwise be totally different subjects, but really are very connected. If you look at it's back up and look at them from a distance, and you'll see the same thing being happening in every one of them, because it's the same agenda. It's part of the same global agenda. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things that I think is is important for people to realize is that now's the time for action. We have a, uh, a federal election coming up in the next couple of months. <clears throat> We have a, a move by Obama to sign the Small Arms Treaty, which they held off until after the election. They want to disarm the American public. They are now moving, probably by Thursday, which is uh, the day after tomorrow, to QE3, which means printing false money so they can devalue the currency, which is theft, because if they make an impoverished population, there will be two people, like they say in the Soviet Union. Those are in line for bread and sausage, and those yep. are order takers and the guards. Yep. Let's come back, back, back to that after the break. Absolutely. Well, we're on the break. We're, break. we're talking about the uh, pseudo-intellectuals of the progressives. They have a, a unidirectional brain. What I find is most of the community colleges, universities, uh, they teach... I call evil evolution, E V I L Y O U, evolution. They try to tell children and young adults that they are highly evolved slime. They teach them things about the carbon cycle that's fatally not even chemistry. They teach them things, for example, one of the things that I found quite amusing, and I like to, to challenge them because I have a background in nuclear physics and chemistry, was they said, Do you know the chlorofluorocarbons can you even give to the upper atmosphere? 
So CFC has never had an effect on the ozone layer because I said you can't have a brick floating in a, in a pond or your <laughs> swimming pool. Yeah, it's yeah, ridiculous. That's right. Yeah, and I said, and I, I said, these theories that they came up with are patently crazy. They did one recently. NASA put up some nanoparticles in the atmosphere uh, around 70,000, 80,000 feet, and they destroyed temporarily the ozone layer over Greenland and caused with the increased sun activity and UV strobing, they caused a giant lake to start appearing at the top of the ice glaciers in Greenland. I mean, these people are patently crazy, and we're allowing them to get away with this crap, and we have this news media with these, you know, the talking head news media that have no scientific background, or even even if they had the ability to ask good questions, they don't. Right. If someone like me or you, we would never have the talk about fairness in broadcasting. Okay, Mr. Obama, one of the things he wants to do is have fairness in broadcasting. Have a pinhead on with a microphone, whatever city you want, and I will fire questions at the pinhead at the same time they want to question what I'm saying or you're saying. Yeah. By all means, Mr. Damned Obama, bring on free affairs and broadcasting because we'll prove that those people are idiots. And they don't, they, and they, what they want to do is get into ad hominem attacks. Well, we're going to attack you on your qualifications or this side. No, no. How about answer the damn question? Give us the data, give us the chemistry, give us the astrophysics, give us the real information. Some of it, of course, the government knows, but it's classified. And they're lying to you because they don't want, they want to control the population. They do. You know, you mentioned Greenland. I'm coming out with a major article on global warming here in a month or so. And one of the things I hit is this concept that we that 93% of Greenland melted uh, right. this past summer. Well, and one of the NASA scientists or somebody that worked for NASA came out and was quoted in the news media that the whole ice cap melted. The whole ice sheet melted. <laughs> yeah. No, well, no, no. no. Yeah, it, yeah. It's miles report. deep. That's not going to happen over centuries. It'll take centuries to no, melt. It couldn't. It <laughs> couldn't. I mean, it's just ludicrous what they think. Well, uh, you know, if you get a quarter millimeter, if you get a, a millimeter of water on the top of the ice sheet because of strobing from ultraviolet light from a chromo, chromo mass ejection, they think that they can scam the population to this scamtastic idea that we're all going to die from from the sea, the sea rising maybe one hundredth of a centillion of a, of a millimeter. It's <laughs> right. ridiculous. And it's like, well, excuse me, uh, you mean it's not going to hit the bottom of my toes, it's going to hit the top of my toes if I go to the beach? Yeah, uh, right. And, and then that right. doesn't even make sense. I mean, no, we're doesn't. moving into an ice age that's actually going to lock up water, and that's the, sea, what, and the yeah. sea level will actually drop, not rise. We're right. going to have the sea level drop as we we'll, move let's, into an let's ice age. We'll talk about that in a moment. But before I do, I, w- I want to tell you a story because it's really a fascinating story. Ba- and I think I might have done a couple of years ago back in one of our programs. But in 1942, in fact, there's a lot of planes that were flying over to Germany and so forth are back that ran out of fuel and had to kind of crash land on the Greenland ice sheet. And this one squadron of P-38s as well as a few B-17s had to land on Iceland because all of the airports were socked in. And they all recovered. All the pilots survived, and the weather stayed good enough for several, about a week or so, that they were able to get them off. A lot of times they survived the crash, but they couldn't get them off because of the bad weather. So there's something like 30 or 40 um, pilots that are still on Greenland uh, that froze to death. Nonetheless, that's a, that's a side story. This group of uh, this squadron called the Lost Squadron basically was there, got removed. Those planes kind of stood on the ice surface for uh, two decades, and then all of a sudden in 1964 they disappeared. Well, they thought, you know, they were maybe a few feet under the ice cap by that time. Well, they turned to look for them in 1992. They finally found them after four years of looking for them, about 268 feet below the ice surface. 268 feet. That means that much ice is formed on Greenland's ice surface during that 20 year, uh, 20 to 40 year well, period. It was well, literally yeah. astonishing. Actually, I thought about that, and I think I've come up with a thesis I want to run by it. The first is what's called ice remodeling, which means there's a every summer there's a little bit of melt, and it refreezes. Yes. The second is there's real ice being formed because the precipitation isn't really that high, but it it's going to produce a new. Uh, and the third area is actually shifting ice. In other words, these ice shift and flow because they're, in a sense, a thick cytropic liquid. They're not really like regular ice like we think of. They're almost like a thick cytropic liquid because they're almost like a super viscous, uh, you know, they're not solid, in other words. They, they yeah. appear solid, but they're semi-solid. And um, 
They're also a mixture. They're not just they're not just uh, ice. There's little bubbles in them. There's living organisms like uh, there are various uh, phytoplankton and other things. And these other organisms, by the way, can pick up ultraviolet light. So they pick up ultraviolet light that actually can heat even deep within the ice and cause crevices and micro cracks and other things. So I think my ice cream model and these other factors is why these sink. Because you can imagine, let's say you make a four inch or six inch you know, uh, pool of water, those planes are going to sink, and then they're going to refreeze, and then the next year they're going to sink and refreeze, and then you add on top of the snow on top. So it's easy to think that over a period of time, between the ice and the snow accumulation, these planes are going to sink a long way down. Well, that may be the case. However, most of the physicists that I talk to in this particular case, there are certainly other places on the on the ice cap that that I I know has happened. But in this group of planes, there is ice strata that kind of show the number of the ice build up. So over there's more it's mainly it's mainly just basically snow compressed to, to right. ice. So in but other it words, it does melt. I, I really do think you're right. Yeah, it so does melt. Yeah, somewhere. in other words, I'm not putting a percentage. I just think it depends on where you're at and yes. what the conditions are. Absolutely. But we know we know that the snow is accumulating faster. In fact, what I found out from some of my sources is that the ice sheet over Antarctica, I mean, people may find this hard to believe, is no older than about 6,000 years. The ice yeah, sheet over Antarctica is not millions of years old. It's only right. about five, 6,000 years old. I, I agree with you totally on that. Yeah. And the ice cap in, in Antarctica is actually growing. It's not shrinking like it is in the, in the Arctic. Uh, and there's a whole different set of circumstances for the Arctic uh, actually looking like it was melting. It wasn't melting. In fact, this paper, I go into that in great detail. It was a major storm, a major summer storm in the Arctic that broke up the ice cap and allowed it to dissolve, basically, into the ocean. And that wasn't melting as in, and is in the fact that it was above 32 degrees and it was melting and so forth. It was broken up. And once you have it down in the water itself, uh, it'll melt very rapidly because the seawater is uh, basically well below freezing, what we normally consider pure water freezing, and it will melt that that uh, ice that's above it. So it's not melting. It's basically it's the weather that's changed. Now, whether the weather that's changed is caused by the warming that we experience, we don't know. That has to yet be determined. But you mentioned a very, very important point, is that our sun is going into hibernation. The first time that it's gone into this kind of hibernation in 300 years. And the last time it went, we had about a degree and a half to two degrees colder temperatures. In other words, it's not going to be global global warming is going to be global cooling. And if that happens, when that happened 300 years ago, we had major food shortages because crops failed. Uh, there was, the growing season wasn't long enough. There was mass starvation, the Black Plague. Now, that has to do with, of course, mice and so forth. But nonetheless, all these things occurred at the same time because of cooling, not yeah, warming. That's, yeah, those are the uh, those are the those basically the Saturn, uh, Jupiter, every 180 years multiplied by two 360-year cycles that are mini Ice Age cycles. And we're also at the convergence of the 10,500, 800-year uh, Ice Age cycle yeah. and the 105,000-year Malachite right. cycle. All of these happening, including the 62 million-year cycle where we pass through the galactic plane. All of these are occurring. And by the way, increased cosmic energy generates uh, microparticles that actually are a micronuclei yeah. for rainfall. Which you know, as a forest expert and environmentalist, rainfall is the thing that drives you to ice ages. Right. Rainfall. And, Not and temperature, rainfall. A quiet sun allows more of that cosmic radiation to come in. Right. And we can more talk rainfall about that. means more ice. More ice means cooling, but the cooling happens after the rain. Yeah. Welcome back, and I want to make a statement on 9-11, how this is tied to our environmental agenda. Again, the two websites you need to go to are americaplunder.com and epi-us.com for Dr. Mike Kaufman. We want to get Dr. Mike back, if we can, monthly, because as we move into the election and afterward, the green agenda is going to be center stage in Obama's greening of America to turn to a global, eco-communist, fascist, Islamic state. And people say, oh, Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating. No, I'm not. In fact, it's even worse than that. But let me read just a statement from 
Um, this is actually from Tim Alexander's website. On this day, 11 years ago, America was attacked by elements of its own government and a foreign-friendly state, Israel. It wasn't attacked by Israel, by the way. Israel and the Mossad nuclear agents, people don't understand this because I'm a Christian Zionist. Most rabbis in uh, the world believe that the, the chief god that they worship is called the Holy Serpent. Okay? You have to understand that Sabbatean Jews are basically... Not all Jews. Most Jews are actually secular agnostics. A lot of them are Messianic Christians like Elia Katz. They have more reason to believe in Jesus Christ than anybody because he's a Jew. We need to understand that the state of Israel is part of America and part of and, and we don't just abandon Israel because we have some bad people over there that want to do stupid things. He said over 3,000 people lost their lives, but it's not just those 3,000. I read a report today that the number of people with cancer, they increased the number of different kinds of cancer by 53. And I spoke to Dr. William Ray today. And I said to him, you know, the state of, of, of Texas tried to pull his license because he took care of five people that the insurance carrier didn't want to pay the bill. So they filed an anonymous complaint to see if they could pull his license, they wouldn't have to pay the bill to take care of these people who got ill from 9-11. We have hundreds of thousands of people, not just the rescue workers, but people living in lower Manhattan and across New Jersey that got poisoned, not only with radioisotopes, heavy metals, volatile chemicals, including polychlorinated chlor biphenyls, dioxins, and dibenzofurans, that are folate anti-metabolites. The U.S. Constitution has been largely shredded. Of course, we, Obama says he's a constitutional lawyer. Well, guess what? The evidence is that every single aspect of the Constitution he's violated, including going to war, executive orders, the NDAA, the Expropriation Act. I mean, this man is a horror. Anybody who tries to defend Obama, and I don't think that people realize that the second term of Obama will resemble the first term of Vladimir Lenin. Uh, we're going to have on the program tomorrow Dr. Bob Thiel. And his book is now the number one on Obama and prophecy on Amazon and Kindle. <laughs> number one. <laughs> and we're going to talk about this because people need to understand that Obama is the best candidate in history for the false prophet. For a leader of a nation that will tell us it's going to be wonderful, we're going to have fairness in wages, we're going to green the economy. He's going to create a total matrix and shove green down our throat until we choke to death. Yeah. Uh, it's unbelievable. And people don't realize I've been blocked repeatedly in trying to do radiation testing by the government. I've been, in fact, threatened when I contacted labs in America, Canada, Britain, and last year in Germany and Spain and Spain, in Japan. I've been trying for almost eight years now to get testing done on radioisotopes. Now I'm trying in labs in, Ger in another lab in Japan and one in Beijing, China, to get radiation testing because I presented data five years ago. I had two nuclear physicists working with me anonymously and a munitions expert that was contracted by a port authority in New York to demolish the World Trade Center. It was an environmental hazard because it had asbestos in the building. It would have cost $1.5 billion per floor to remove the asbestos from the building while it's still standing. So the money that came out of that went to the Blackstone Group, the Global Bankers, and George Soros. The ARIA complex in Las Vegas was built from that money. That's just some of the money that flowed out of it. The global bankers now promulgated two illegal wars. The war with the weapons of mass destruction and colon battle, I call them, and the war in Afghanistan. Now the war is coming up, which are virtually a guarantee of whoever gets in. In fact, it, what I have from my very respectable sources is around a 75% plus chance of an attack before the war. It looks like Obama is slipping in the polls. And a 100% chance if either one of these characters gets in that they're going to do a preemptive airstrike with EMP weapons, etc., against Syria and Iran. And the Syria and Iran are not going to take this lightly. Plus, it'll not only cause an environmental disaster with Bashir blown up on top of Fukushima, but the price of oil will go through the ceiling. And, of course, they'll have their ready-made solution that they'll now proliferate nuclear reactors until it's all safe. And these are all unsafe nuclear reactors, no way, safe way of storing the debris. Uh, all of it sitting on site, like all the reactors like San Onofre, 45, 50 years of reactor stuff, literally 12 miles from where I live. Thank God the reactors are in the red so much they're not likely to get back up again. But speak to this, because 9-11 is the start of what I call the eco-catastrophe of the planet. The dioxin and dibenzofuran concentration that's toxically affecting every person on Earth doubled with the demolition of those buildings, building Twin Towers and Building 7, which literally fell, <laughs> it fell from fright. 9-11 uh, <laughs> is a criminal activity by Dick Cheney, the son of darkness, 
by uh, elements within our U.S. Space Command, which had to put these false blips on the screen because I, I worked and was one of the doctors that took care of employees at Space Command. By uh, It wasn't a guy on dialysis in a cave in Afghanistan directing our jets to do all these things and go real slow so they couldn't intercept these airliners. The buildings were designed to withstand a 707, which was the same throw weight as a 747, 767. There's no way the World Trade Center towers fell with a directed energy weapon, with a jet aircraft, or just fell out of fright. They fell because they had a chain of nukes inside them. These were a controlled demolition, and they're also the start of the demolition of the economy. And literally today, which is 11 years now, is the day that in two days... They're going to start the final demolition of the world economy, which will be a green economy coming out of this. And Ben Bernanke, I guarantee you, I'm going to put 100% bet on Thursday after the ECB that he will bring forth a plan to literally put on a massive QE3, which will not only bring back the stock market, and it'll surge like crazy, but guess what? We're heading into a place where private property, private vehicles, private homes will be gone, and you'll be compressing these super compact sites because Obama's agenda is Agenda 21. Tell me about it. It's very true. I, I can't agree with you more about that particular prognosis. Uh, that's part of the perfect storm that I was talking about earlier in the program, that the green economy basically is is a bankrupt economy. It will not, it cannot work. And yet they will try to force it on the world and bring us basically all to a third world nation status as they far as they're standing to the death. They want to starve us to death. Well, Their policy the is to reduce us under a billion people. What I've heard from the Georgia Guidestones and elsewhere, and I got the Federation of Earth documents directly from Dr. Eisen, who founded the World Constitution Parliament Association. I've got the actual Federation of Earth documents. They want to reduce the population, just like the Georgia Guidestones, to under 500 million for the whole planet from 7 billion, roughly. Yes, That's in a fact, big that was- jump. The, the global biodiversity assessment that I use to stop the ratification of the Convention on Biological Diversity basically says that we must reduce the Earth's human population down to one or two billion people. I mean, that's in the same bracket. Well, uh, that, well Bill Gates wants a vaccine to stop fertility. Uh, I got three sets of documents when I went in 1997, March 16th, to Zurich, Switzerland. God commanded me to go there. I gave a lecture on the super soldier program and fetal tissue transplantation to the private board of the Human Life International national in Zurich. Afterward, they brought out a box, literally like, you know, a foot and a half high of documents. The largest part was the swine avian flu that they were going to launch. This is years before anybody knew about it and even published in 2003 in, in Foreign Affairs by the doctors from Wisconsin. They had a vaccine against pregnancy that would cause a- antibodies against the human chorionic anatotropin. <laughs> and they had the, all the documents of how they created the AIDS virus to destroy people. The fact is they want, and Bill Gates has stated this, they want to vaccinate everybody against pregnancy. People say, oh, Dr. Deagle, you're just exaggerating. Obamacare mandates vaccines. If you get Obamacare and you have no private option, you're going to be forced vaccinated with vaccines stacked so high, you'll not have a thinking neuron in your frontal lobes ever again. Well, we're certainly seeing that. Uh, this one thing that the, the progressives that I have seen over and over and over again, they have no, they're linear thinkers, thinkers if they're thinkers at all. I think Sometimes they're advertised they puppets with a, they got a demon with a little hand controls, they're operating in a different yeah. realm of spiritual. It really is, yeah. it's astonishing. I just cannot yeah. believe you, if somebody says something one day, the whole nation saying exactly the same phrase the next. It's true, it's beyond belief that these people are parrots. And the thing that really astonished me that made me write this book is that there was a psychiatrist back in 1895 that published published a book that said exactly the same thing about these people. They really are nuts. Yeah. They're, they're people that lack a major portion of what it is to be a human being. To, yep. be, to be responsible, to be spiritually connected to the Most High God, to actually have rationality, common sense, decency, inductive and deductive logic, have group care about each other, you know, the altruistic care for other human beings in our planet, to be a true steward. And the maniacs at the top and we're not going to call them the elite. They're maniacs at the top. Need to be, they need to be cuckold. They need to be castrated politically and otherwise. We need to stop this foolishness because we only have this election and there and, and are many action points afterward to turn back the tide to destruction. Yeah. And our world is going to go through a lot of earth changes. They're going to collapse crops and make it a very violent place to live. And the government's not helping it. They're amplifying the problem. 